Hi everyone, welcome to the Thursday edition of Source 16 News. I'm Eddie Owen. Thanks for joining us. Well, in the wake of severe weather and damaging floods throughout the Commonwealth, particularly in western Kentucky, Governor Steve Bashir today requested a major disaster declaration from President Barack Obama. And uh, we will be adding counties as they get their damage reports put together to that uh, request. And I feel confident that uh, he'll grant that uh, declaration. That will allow uh, federal assistance in terms of particularly financial assistance to come in for local government, state government, uh, and also uh, businesses and individual assistance. The governor traveled to western Kentucky to see the storm damage in person. During his four-city tour, Bashir stopped at a shopping center on the corner of 10th and Chestnut Street in Murray this afternoon to assess storm damage. Murray and Callaway County was a fairly quick event with the wind and the, the straight line winds and the damage that it caused. Uh, other parts of the state uh, are, are having kind of a gradual disaster in terms of flooding. Uh, I know you all have a little bit of water on the roads and that kind of thing, but uh, we've got uh, floods all up and down the Ohio and around the Mississippi, of course, down in our river counties here. But in a positive light, after getting hammered with severe weather for multiple days, Kentucky only reported one storm-related death. That's out of 268 from six states. What a tragedy that was. And while we're experiencing a lot of property damage, uh, and it will take us a while to kind of dig our way out of this after the waters recede, uh, certainly when you compare us to uh, what's happened in other states, we've got a lot to be thankful for. Bashir also visited Paducah, Henderson, and Smithland, where he helped fill sandbags. Currently, 61 counties, including Caldwell, Callaway, Christian, Fulton, Graves, Hickman, Hopkins, Lyon, Marshall, Muhlenberg, Ohio, Todd, and Trigg have all declared states of disaster. Meanwhile, Congressman Ed Whitfield of Hopkinsville today toured storm and flood damaged areas in the 1st District. He led Kentucky's House delegation in writing a letter to President Obama supporting Bashir's major disaster request. Whitfield visited communities in 10 counties and met with local first responders, emergency response coordinators, and county judge executives to discuss the specific needs in each local area while also seeing the damage firsthand. Well, officials are warning residents and visitors that lake levels for Lake Barkley and Kentucky Lake could rise 13 feet over the summer pool level by Monday due to the recent rainfall. Tennessee Valley Authority and the Corps of Engineers are predicting the lake levels at land between the lake's National Recreation Area to rapidly rise to 372 feet. The current level is 363 and a half feet and is predicted to rise by about 5 feet by Saturday. Officials say this will greatly impact LBL's boat ramps, campsites, trails and roads and efforts are underway to barricade and close all impacted areas. LBL staff warns visitors who use these areas to be extremely cautious and observe all closures for your safety. In addition, LBL officials are urging everyone to use caution when crossing creeks, streams or any areas with standing or flowing water. Wranglers Campground and Turkey Bay off highway vehicle area will remain closed until further notice due to this week's storm damages. Visitors are encouraged to check the alerts and notices page on LBL's website, that's lbl.org, or to call before you haul at 270-924-2000. For current information, closure list, and details due to the recent storm damage and predicted rises in lake levels. The Mayfield Police Department is trying to raise money for one of their comrades that was killed in a fatal crash Wednesday. In a story we first reported last night at 10, an off-duty Mayfield police officer, 31-year-old Andrew Washington of Murray, was tragically killed in a weather-related wreck in Callaway County Wednesday afternoon around 3.30. Kentucky State Police say Washington was driving south on Butterworth Road, that's north of Kentucky 94, when his 2006 Saturn hit a pool of water on the road, which caused his vehicle to hydroplane off the road and crash into a utility pole. Washington was pronounced dead on the scene by the Callaway County coroner. Mayfield police are trying to raise money to help out with Officer Washington's funeral expenses, as well as his wife and two children, who are also needing funds in the amount of $1,700, so they can fly to his home state of Oregon for funeral services there. 
Cash donations are being accepted at the Mayfield Police Department located at 215 East Broadway and checks can be made out to the police department. In addition, flowers can also be brought to the City Hall to be placed on Officer Washington's vehicle, which is located underneath the flagpoles on East Broadway. At this time, funeral arrangements have not been determined. An autopsy was scheduled today at the State Medical Examiner's Office in Madisonville. Washington had been a police officer at the Mayfield Police Department since 2007. Well, police are looking for a man that robbed New Wave Communications in Benton at Knife Point. Around 2 o'clock yesterday afternoon, Benton police say an unknown male walked into New Wave Communications at 315 West 5th Street, pulled a knife, and demanded money. He left the store with an undisclosed amount of money and a 42-inch television. The male was described as about 30 years old, 5 feet 8 inches, medium build with a dark complexion. He was wearing blue jeans, a red hoodie, and black rain jacket. Police say he was driving a small silver four-door car, possibly a Hyundai Elantra, traveling westbound on West 5th Street. Now, anyone with information is asked to contact the Benton Police Department or, or anonymously with Crime Stoppers at 270-527-COPS. Well, the streets of Nashville will be flooded with people this weekend. Over 35,000 runners from across the nation will gather at the start line of the Country Music Marathon and Half Marathon. A group from the Hopkinsville YMCA will be among the pack, all with one goal in common. Michelle Heron has more. I cross the finish line, it's just an amazing feeling of accomplishment. Over 30 runners from Hopkinsville's YMCA will represent Christian County in Nashville's 12th annual Country Music Marathon and Half Marathon this Saturday. The Irving couple will run the full 26.2 miles together for the first time and say it's each other's support that will help them along the way. I may be feeling fine for one five mile stretch and she may have a cramp or is hurting or something and then vice versa the next five miles so you, you motivate each other. Yeah. This is the first training program for runners at the Hopkinsville YMCA, which not only helps keep up morale, but also increases safety. You have to train for any running event, but especially a half marathon, because you, ha you have to be strong enough physically, like in the thighs and the and quads and hamstrings, to withstand that, that long of a distance, but also cardiovascularly and pulmonary. You Seasoned marathoner Laura Field will take on the 13.1 in Nashville for the fifth time and says it's the runner's high that keeps her wanting more. I enjoy running, I enjoy the feeling that I get from running, and I enjoy the accomplishment, the, the feeling of success. Whether they are running the full 26 or the 13.1, whether they are seasoned or beginners, each runner will have one common goal this Saturday and that's to cross the finish line. Michelle Heron, Source 16 News. The Hopkinsville YMCA plans on continuing their program for runners. Now, if you'd like more information, contact Warren No 270-887-5382. U.S. Senate Republican leader Mitch McConnell announced today that the Senate will vote on the budget President Barack Obama submitted to Congress in February. According to McConnell, the president's budget has already drawn bipartisan opposition because, according to him, it spends too much, taxes too much, and borrows too much. And he says if implemented, it would raise more than a trillion in new taxes, add another $13 trillion to the already unsustainable national debt, and do absolutely nothing about the looming entitlement crisis or to preserve promises Congressman has made to future generations, again, according to McConnell. He says since there's no Democratic budget in the Senate, we'll give our colleagues an opportunity to stand with the president in his call for trillions in spending, massive new debt, and higher taxes on American energy, families, and small businesses across the country. The Senate returns Monday, but there's not a date scheduled for the majority leader's planned vote on the Ryan budget which will be held at the same time as the vote on the president's budget. McConnell said the Democratic-led Budget Committee has yet to produce a budget or schedule a markup of a budget resolution. And this would be the second straight year without a budget resolution in the Senate. Well, you know, sometimes life's not fair. We've just come out of cold and flu season, only to arrive smack in the middle of spring allergy season. So what can you do about that runny nose and nasal congestion? Medications are one option, but so is nasal cleansing. Now, here's more on how nasal cleansing can help. 
from the Mayo Clinic. It's just a little bit of a strange feeling. And Nancy Arendt says it definitely looks a bit strange, but she's a firm believer that nasal cleansing helps decrease allergy symptoms and cuts her risk of catching a cold. And I use it off and on during the cold season, especially during allergy season, I have hay fever. Nancy uses what's called a neti pot. She fills it with eight ounces of water and about an eighth of a teaspoon of salt. You keep your mouth open a little and just you, it's, it's neat how the water just drains right through to the other side. Almost immediately after I use it, it's, I can feel my nasal passages open up. Nasal cleansing may feel good, but does it work? It's actually helpful for uh, almost any symptom that has to do with nasal congestion, nasal crusting, dryness, or runny nose. So allergies, colds, sinus infections are all oftentimes helped by the simple procedure. Mayo Clinic Dr. Daniel Blum is an ear, nose, and throat doctor who recommends nasal cleansing with salt water to his patients. He says your nose is like a filter. It functions by making a blanket of mucus to trap particles so they don't get into your lungs. In a normal nose, this layer is renewed every 10 minutes or so. But if dryness makes secretions thick, the nose can't clear it. Bacteria can grow. Nasal cleansing washes the thick layer away, reducing congestion, dryness, and your chance of getting an infection. Nancy cleanses her nose when she feels like it needs it. Dr. Bloom says it's safe to do every day. <sighs> I like it. I mean, really, it does open up your nasal passages. For Medical Edge, I'm Vivian Williams. And you can get more information at mayoclinic.org. Now, Friday's Mega Millions jackpot's all the way up to $40 million. And no slouch on Saturday either. The Powerball jackpot is $25 million.